Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for his church in the air, and then with his church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption draws nigh. Welcome, everyone, to another LHB Last Days Update for Part 6 on our new series, Daniel the Visionary, where we go through the book of Daniel and, they, they, you know, get the riches of the prophecies of that book. Back with us is Brother Lewis. Brother Lewis, why don't you say hi to the LHB family? I'd like to welcome everyone back. Uh, it's good to uh, to be here once one more time. It, it seems like it. The time just flies by when we do this. Um, we're doing Daniel 6, and um, even those who have never heard of Jesus have heard of this story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, like, yeah. it's up there with uh, David and Goliath and yeah, uh, fiery yeah. furnace, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing chapter. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. That way, every time we upload a video, you guys get notified right away. And again, share this video because that's how this channel grows uh, through YouTube is by sharing. So we can't express enough to share the videos. Okay. And with that being said, uh, brother, you got your Bible handy in front of you. Yes. And I believe cha chapter six yes, has only tw 28, 28 uh, verses. Verses. So okay. as always, you know, we're going to read through the entire chapter, and then we'll go back and break down some verses. So whenever you're ready, my friend, go for it. All right. And it says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first, and the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. When this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes, because of an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to send him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes thought to find an occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find none, find none occasion or fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said this man, We shall not find any occasion against Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then this president and princess assembled together to the king and says unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdoms, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal stature, to make a firm decree that whoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, now, O king, establish a decree and sign the writing that it should that it that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in the chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did a fourth time. This, then this man assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. When they came near and spake, spake before the king concerning the king's decree, has thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask petition of any god or any man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast in the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Then answer they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that has, has signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set in his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored until the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then this man assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persian is, that no decree or statute which the king establisheth may be changed. The king then commanded that they brought Daniel and cast him in the den of lions. 
Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continuously, he will deliver thee. And the stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel's. Then the, then the king went into his palace and passed the night fasting, then there were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose early, very early in the morning and went in, in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth, and they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocence he was found in me, I also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. And the king commanded... <clears throat> And they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them in the den of lions. Them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones into pieces, or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote unto all the people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall not even unto the end. He delivered and rescued, and he worked signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who has delivered Daniel from the powers of the, of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Wow, man! I tell yeah. you, th this is uh, this should tell uh, the the Christian today that we have a yeah. God that is very faithful, and nothing can happen to any of us without God's permission, right? Uh, correct. Uh, we we see that in Job when uh, Satan went up to God, and he had to ask permission from God to be able to touch Job, um, and this happens, like you said. With every Christian, with every children of God, Satan needs permission from God to do anything to us. And and when he does get permission, it's because he knows that whatever we're gonna go through, okay, we will not deny him. Right. And you know, a lot of that time a lot of the times when God does give uh, Satan permission to do uh, something in our lives, it's because it's either corrective in measure, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's either to uh, increase our faith. You know, or mm -hmm. to keep us humble, like, you know, the Apostle Paul was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, because of the visions mm -hmm. that he was receiving from the Lord. And the mm -hmm. Lord knows that the human condition is to uh, exalt yourself in pride when you get, you know, certain knowledge, special yes. treatment, then you, you tend to ex lift yourself up. And the Lord is so loving towards us that he will allow uh, uh, trouble into our lives just to keep mm -hmm. us uh, humble, right? Um, correct. Uh, he he teaches us in in ways that uh, we we sometimes don't want to be uh, corrected that way. Um, but he knows us, and and he knows that we we're, we're different, uh, and and he corrects us differently. But a lot of the times, uh, yeah, he does uh, bring down a little bit of the rod with him uh, to correct us. Well, hey, uh, we, we'd rather get corrected by that divine rod than not yeah. be corrected like the lost world, you know, because yes. if you're without correction, the Bible says, then you are bastards, meaning you don't have yeah. God as your father. Yeah. So, OK, King Darius. OK, uh, this is one of the two kings that were reigning during this time, the Medes and the mm -hmm. Persians. You had Darius and Cyrus. OK, and it looks like, uh, you know, Darius uh did something a little foolish here. Uh, you know, he did a quick decision based on uh, the the trappings uh, from his wise men and his princes. He, he exalted these princes in this kingdom uh, mm -hmm. to make sure everything ran smoothly, but they didn't like the fact that they, they, he also exalted Daniel over them. 
And so these princes that Darius, you know, exalted, you know, they didn't like Daniel uh, as their boss, so to speak. You know, Daniel was the overseer of all of this because of the favor God gave uh, to Daniel during the reigns of these kings. And so they did something. Uh, they plotted something, didn't they? Uh, yes, they did. Um, you know, he, he chose three um, that he trusted the most, but he trusted Daniel more than the other two. So he put him above it. Um, Daniel was uh, like his right, right hand man. Uh, you know, uh, the word tells us that uh, Jesus sits at the right hand of God. And, and, and when someone is your right hand, it means that he, you and he are together in everything, and he speaks for you. Uh, humanly speaking, uh, that's that's why it's, it, it talks about Jesus at the right hand. So uh, he did put Daniel above everyone. And, uh, so, and then you, you go back, it's the same thing with Joseph. You had Pharaoh and you had Joseph. Here you have the king and then you have Daniel. Two, two people um, in, in a country that was just, you know, Seen so everywhere, yeah. yeah, and it was foreign to them. It wasn't yeah. something they were accustomed to. These are pagan yeah. kings, pagan rulers, yeah. and uh, in the midst of that, God still gave favor to these men of God, which is amazing. But then yeah. it says here, if we go down to verse five, it says that these men said, we shall not find any occasion against Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So they tried to look, you know, for a fault, something to accuse Daniel. And they couldn't find anything. And they said, yeah. well, we know we know that uh, he, he prays to his God every day faithfully. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look for something in the law of God, right? Uh, yes, uh, we're going to use, uh, the, 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 you know, what he believes in against him. Um, but they chose the wrong thing to uh, <laughs> to charge him with. Uh, you, you know, God says that He holds His voice above His own name, and and, and you, you don't mess with the law at that time, and you don't mess with His children. That's right. That's right. And and you know, uh, Daniel, as we know, was greatly beloved by God. So yeah. you know, it, it's like. Any father, you know, when you you, you kind of bully their kid, they're you know you're gonna yeah. catch the wrath of the, of the father. <laughs> the father and, is. and these these individuals that were plotting against Daniel, um, they found out the hard way. We're gonna get to that, but it says you know verse seven that they you know all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes. So this is a, a large group of individuals that are plotting, mm. and yeah. counselors and captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute to make a firm decree. Now they're catering to the mm. king's ego. You know, they're, they're saying, hey, listen, you know, uh, you, you, you're the king, and, 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 you know, there should be no other god here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody should be praying to any other god except for you, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, they, they put Darius in, 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 in a godhood position, you know. And, and it's funny, really, it says here that all the, you know, president of the kingdoms and the government, um, and, and it wasn't all of them. Uh, because he didn't include Daniel in here. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> except nothing about her. And, and, yeah. and, you know, Daniel and his friends, because they can't yeah. have Shad, Misha, and Abednego in there either. They yeah. they still yeah. remember the fiery furnace story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, but, you know, they, mm. should, they didn't learn from it, because if they would have yeah. remembered and learned from it, they would have known that this would have ended very badly for them in the end, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, but, you know, je uh, jealousy uh, will blind people. You know, um, and and they'll create a short memory. Um, and this is this is really, if you look, I look at it as just pure hate that they have for for Daniel and his position. And you know, beyond that, you know, looking into the spiritual realm here, uh, we know that Satan is behind this. Yes. Um, we know that Satan and his angels are against the Jewish people, against Christians today. Um, they they he hates. The fact that Israel exists, and if just one Jew exists, he he wants to destroy them because uh, he wants to destroy Bible prophecy. He he, uh, that's his main thing. If he could destroy Israel, destroy the Jews, then there will be no need for the Messiah to come back because there's no place to come back to and no people to come back to, and he would have proven God to be a liar because God says that he will always protect Israel. So if Satan could somehow wipe them off the face of the earth, then God would be proven a liar, and therefore God cannot judge uh, Satan on his sins since he himself is a sinner, right? 
uh, correct. And then you were talking about that, that these uh, governors didn't learn from what happened before with Daniel. Well, Satan hasn't learned anything either. I mean, he keeps making the same mistake. Uh, I, I guess he figures that maybe one day God is going to get tired and just say, okay, okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to rest. You know, uh, uh, well, but you know, he neither sleeps nor slumbers. <laughs> I tell you, you, you know what? And it says, "He that watches over Israel yeah, neither yeah. sleeps nor slumbers," which That's is a good verse there. Yeah. And um, yeah, you're right. Satan should know by now that you know he can't escape from underneath the prophecies. I mean, the prophecies are going to happen. Israel's going to be remain in the land since they've been since they've returned, and this is May 14th, 1948. They will uh, be surrounded by their enemies, but at the same time, as we will learn later on in this very book of Daniel, chapter 12, I believe, that Michael the Archangel is assigned to personally watch yeah. over Israel, right? Uh, yes, we, we, we'll get to that when, and it talks about the Prince of Persia, which is a fallen angel. That, uh, uh, but then they have Michael, the Prince of all angels. So you know they are protected. Um, not that they need Michael; they have God. But God has a way of dealing uh, with us, and and He uses angels. Uh, in this case, Israel is protected by um, what we think is a, you know. The mightiest angel in heaven at this moment. Absolutely, I mean, he, he's the uh, only angel called Archangel. Angel. Uh, yeah. Whenever you see Michael, it says he is the Archangel, not yeah. one of the archangels or not yeah. a archangel. So it's, it's a very particular title that he yeah. has. It's kind of like what you know, uh, uh, Satan uh, when he was mm -hmm. Lucifer. Uh, yeah. He was called the anointed cherub. Cherub, sure, yes. Now, the, the, cher the cherubim are the highest form of angels, and he mm -hmm. was the chief among them. Uh, yes. That was in the very presence of God, right? Uh, yes, and, and, and it's very specific. It's just anointed. It puts him above every other one at the time. Uh, and, 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 and you know, you read in Ezekiel, you read in Isaiah, and, and you, you know, he had it all. If anyone had it all. Lucifer had it all. Well, uh, there goes psychology out the window yeah. because he can't say, hey, I had a troubled childhood. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I remember. No, he, yeah. he grew up in a perfect environment. So that, that's a yeah. lesson for everybody that says, oh, I came from a bad upbringing or a bad <laughs> environment. No, yeah. no, no. We all yeah. have choices. All of us individually choose who we will yeah. serve and who we will follow. Now, so these, these men rile up the king. You know, they get Darius angry now. They're saying, hey, uh, you put this decree in effect, and uh, your favorite, uh, Daniel, is is disobeying you to your face openly three times a day, praying to his yes. God. Oh, king, you know, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> so the yes. king, of course, you know, he loved Daniel. He really yes. loved Daniel as a friend, you know, uh, and and it troubled him now that he he's going to have to honor this law. Yes that he was conned into to making, right? Yes, it says, um, you know, then the king, when he heard this word, was sore displeased with himself because he realized that he allowed himself to be uh, manipulated, and now it could cost Daniel his life. Like you said, he trusted Daniel more than anyone in the whole kingdom. Uh, so, yes, they had, they, they had a great relationship. And this, this must have infuriated the little mm. mob. Because they're like, hey, this, this guy's a Hebrew. He's a Jew. Well, yeah. you know, we're, we're Babylonian from birth. You know, yeah. how dare this guy, you know, proclaim to tell us anything? You know, you can almost see the envy. You can almost hear the envy in their, yeah. in their voices yeah. reading these passages. And, of course, you know, the, the king fell for it in his ego, but he regretted it. Uh, right away, and he yeah. tried to labor all night, all day, to try to get uh, Daniel from out of this thing. Yeah. But then these these same con men, these manipulators, said, "Oh, King, you know the law here. Uh, once a, once a law has been uh, issued, uh, it can't be changed, <laughs> right?" Uh, yeah, um, you know, he it says he labored into the night, um, just like you said, trying trying to find something, a loophole, you know, so he wouldn't have to punish Daniel. Um, according to the law that he himself uh, put, put put together, um, and you know he realizes like it, it, it's you know it's great to be thought of as a god and be prayed to, but now I'm losing a friend over this over my pride. 
Right. And, you know, you can almost see Satan uh, behind the scenes, like clapping his hand and in, in glee at what's about to happen. Um, but, you know, uh, the, the king and, and of course, these uh, these men that group themselves together uh, to try to assassinate, because that's what it is to assassinate mm -hmm. Daniel. Um, they're going to learn a very hard lesson here. Um, just like, again, going back to the fiery furnace, you know, the, the, these guys that are casting in these three Hebrew children. Mm -hmm. they, they got burned. They got destroyed by the very flames that they were heating up seven times hotter to destroy the children of Israel, right? Yeah, and, and like I said, they didn't learn anything uh, from, from the dream that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had of the statue uh, to, to them, uh, to, to the fire furnace. You know, it's sometimes uh, uh, envy, uh, jealousy um, will blind you and, 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 and you won't be able to think of anything else but, you know, um, revenge. Right. You know, and I tell you what, um, the king had no choice at this, more, at this point, too, mm. but to cast uh, Daniel, his beloved friend, into this den of lions. Now, brother, you, you like to study history. You know that when we talk about a den of lions, we're not talking about like lions that you go to the zoo and, mm. you know, they're all cute to watch and everything. We're talking about lions they purposely starved. Yes. So when they cast somebody down there, they were immediately devoured, right? Uh, and we're going to read that later on. Um, and, and it was for this purpose that um, you, you wouldn't last, you know, five minutes in there with all these lions coming after you. Uh, it, it, it's a terrible, horrible death. Um, and, and the sad part is that people, you know, enjoy doing this to other human beings. Um, but yes, those, those lions uh, who would not normally eat human meat, okay? Um, now, like you said, they would starve them and anything that was thrown in there, they would devour. Yeah, and then this is, which tells us that there were a lot of people getting thrown in there uh, since yes. they were kept starved, because if you starve them too much, they'll die. So mm. you don't want the lions to die, so you got to keep them mm. fed. Now, um, it, it's amazing because the king, King Darius thought, you know, hey, this is it for my friend Daniel. But then mm. he said, you know, Daniel, maybe the God that you, you know, make supplications to, maybe he'll hear you. You know, yeah. you see, at this point, Darius is also starting to have faith to, yeah. in the God of heaven based on the faith of Daniel. He, he saw like this same God that, you know, that he's been serving for all these years. Now, we mentioned this, that, you know, when Daniel got captured, he was a young man. Yeah, you know, and now he's he's an aged man. He's probably close to what ninety by this time. Uh, yes, because he he, he serves at uh, Darius and Cyrus, and and that's the end of you know. Uh, so he he's really pretty old by now. Um, and, and to be able to maintain your uh your testimony like Daniel did for so many years, you talk about no skeleton in the closet. Uh, I mean, th 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 this was it. Daniel is. is it's got to be one of the most righteous men in the Bible. Not perfect. We're not saying he was perfect and didn't sin. But, I mean, you know, yet that testimony is it, it, overpowering. Right. It's, it's basically his love for the Lord. And I'm glad you yes. clarified that. When, when, when it says uh, a man or a woman of God is righteous, it's not talking about self-righteousness. Right. It's talking about their, their faith in the one who makes them righteous. You know, uh, uh, Noah, you know, found grace in the sight of God. He was considered yeah. righteous in his day. Yeah. And Joseph was righteous in his day. David was yeah. a considered a man after God's own heart. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, if you look at David's life, he's not, he <laughs> wasn't uh, righteous by no means. Yeah. Uh, you know, committed adultery, killed the woman that he was sleeping with husband, you know, uh, you know, tried mm -hmm. to hide and cover up the crime for a whole year. So. Mm -hmm. To be called a man after God's own heart after that, that shows that even through all of that, David's faith never wavered. It mm. never wavered in the God in, in whom he served, right? Yes, and if we, we read the, the Psalms, um, David knows that he has committed a sin. He knows that uh, what he has done is not right in God's eyes. But David spent a lot of time in the temple praying and asking for forgiveness and, and most people uh, don't realize that that is the secret okay for your relationship to god it's it's admitting your sin is going before the throne you know and, and and saying i'm sorry i please forgive me and and god is quick to forgive you
And, you know, fast forward to after the cross now, Mm -hmm. um, we are made righteous by what Christ has done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, by his finished work on the cross. So now David, uh, Daniel, Noah, Job, yes. all of them looked forward to the coming yes. Messiah. We look backwards right. to the Messiah that has already come. And it's all pointing to that same Messiah. It's pointing to Jesus Christ, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Um, they were Daniel, David, uh, they were all made righteous through Jesus, even though you know, they, he had not been born and, and he had not g- g- gone to the cross. But like you said, they looked forward. You know, since Abraham looked forward to his day and he saw it, you know. Yes. And so um, it's it's God's promise, it's God's love, it's God's mercy. You, you know, it's it, it's hard to explain if you're not a Christian. Uh, for me to you know, for for me to explain it to a, a, a non-Christian, I mean, um, it, it's you just know. And people say, how do you know? It's just you know because the Holy Spirit that dwells in you convicts you of these things. And, you, you know, you, you do feel, you know, God's righteousness. Um, and you know that before him, uh, you, you're always going to be, you know, less than, uh, than perfect unless there's uh, Christ between you. Then you're made perfect through Christ. That's right, because it's not no longer your righteousness, but Christ's righteousness. <laughs> and yes. when God looks at us, uh, he looks at us through the lens of his son. He yeah. sees, you know, you know, Satan is still up there and, you know, he goes up to heaven occasionally to accuse the brethren. He's called the accuser of the brethren. So, yes. you know, you can say, oh, Chris, oh, he did that sin over there. Lewis, he did that sin over there. Mm. You see, Lord, these guys are not worthy. You see, they just did that horrible sin. And all Jesus does is show the palms of his hands and and says it yeah. is finished, you know, get the yeah. hence, you know, <laughs> you know. So and there's coming a time, as we read in Revelation, where Satan's going to be locked out of heaven completely and grounded on yeah. planet Earth. Right. Yes. Yes. And, and that's going to make him angry than uh, any time before that. Uh, and he's really going to go after God's people. The, the Jews at the time will, will be in heaven uh, and we'll see all. All this from heaven, from a heavenly point of view, uh, but this will enrage Satan when he's no longer allowed into heaven. Amen. So now we have Daniel and the lions then, and now these hungry lions are looking at him like a pork chop. <laughs> and suddenly, something weird happens. Um, they don't attack him. You know, no. they they their hunger, you know, goes away for the moment. Uh, and uh, an angel is there to shut the mouth. Mm-hmm. of uh of these lions uh so you know sometimes even in our lives you know when we, we when things go wrong like we, we figure like man i got a flat tire today and you're all bummed out or or my alarm clock didn't go off at a certain time and i know i said it we don't know what's going on behind the scenes we don't know yeah. if the lord is protecting us from something if we had left at a certain time yeah. or you know didn't get that flat we got to understand that in hebrews it says that these that, that god's angels are ministering spirits sent spirit. forth to minister to those who are heirs to salvation and that's everyone that believes in the lord jesus christ right uh correct we we, we do not see two percent of everything that goes on around us and, and what we're protected from um and, and, and it's good for us not to see certain things. Uh, uh, humanly, uh, we, we, we shouldn't see it. Uh, God protects us from that, too. Um, but he's always there. When he says he will never leave you or forsake you, you know, he's going to stick closer than a brother. He's there. All the, God is there all the time. Even if we don't feel his presence, which I don't understand what that means. Uh, <laughs> and people well, say, know, I don't, I don't, I don't feel, yeah. Yeah, I don't feel his presence. <laughs> it's like, why okay. are you trusting me? Why are you trusting your feelings to begin with? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. don't trust your so, feelings or trust your heart. Don't trust any of that. Yeah. Trust the written, revealed word of God. And yes. if, the, if the word of God <laughs> says that you can trust the Lord, and then you can trust the Lord. Yeah, he will always be there. He's not going to forsake you. He's not, you are his for all eternity. Even though we are on earth, we are his for all eternity. And Daniel knew this. Yeah. Daniel and his Hebrew friends knew this. And, you know, the king was just getting, a, after this, this whole fiasco with the lines then, the king, I believe at this moment, became a believer in uh, the, the God of Daniel. Uh, because, you know, <laughs> at, the, at the end of everything, he goes here. 
Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. After that, it goes down and says, when, it, when the king asked Daniel, my God has sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth, Daniel is ex explaining to the king. And then it says here, <laughs> then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner, I mean, not even a scratch, no manner of yeah. hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. Now, in verse 24, <laughs> it's amazing. It says, mm. and the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel. Mm. Here we go. And they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Basically, they were devoured. Yes. Before they even fully hit the ground, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> yes, and, and, what, and what you said that you know th this this uh, lions were kept hungry all the time, so it must have been a feast for them. Um, <laughs> now, some people may look at this and it says you know that they threw their children and their wives, but you also have to realize that these were people you know children that were going to grow up to reject God. Okay, and, this were not innocent to seek, and to seek revenge. Think yes. So, and, and you know, the, the, the wives of these uh, men were not any better than the husbands. So uh, this and is by punishment. The way, by the way, you know, God allowed this, but God didn't make Just this law. Egyptian law. You got to kill not only the soldier, but his entire family. That's yeah. not a law that came from God. This is a law that came from man, but God mm -hmm. allowed it as punishment for what they tried to do to Daniel, right? Uh, yes, and we would go back to the book of Esther, and uh, Haman tried to do this. Uh, he wanted um, Mordecai to be hanged. So what he wanted, what he, wa the, he wanted the king to do when he was, uh, found out what he had done, it was turned on him. So this is what they call poetic justice. <laughs> hey, this is what the Bible calls you reap what you sow. If you live yeah. by the sword, you die by the sword. You know? so, yeah. so, I mean, uh, you know, and by the way, God is not blind. You no. know, when people say, say things like, oh, man, I can't believe they got away with murder. No, they didn't get away with no. anything. No, nobody yeah. on this planet gets away with anything. You may escape yeah. temporarily human justice. But there is no yes. way you're escaping God's justice. You're going you're gonna to meet God either on this side of heaven or the other, but you're going to meet him and you're going to answer for everything. And either Jesus paid for those sins or you're going to pay for those sins, right? Uh, yeah, and uh, our bank account is not large enough to pay for the sins. Uh, even in eternity, in suffering, does not pay for all the sins uh, unless uh, you look to Jesus. Amen. And now here we go. We go down to um, uh, verse 26. And this is King Darius. And I tell you, we'll, we'll end with this one. He says, mm -hmm. I make a decree. So now he's making a new decree. Yes. That every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. I mean, what a testimony. Yeah. For he, and look at it, look at his dec declaration. Mm -hmm. For he is the living God. Because he, see, Darius, Cyrus, all those those pagan kings knew that all those idols were dead gods. They were not real. Yes. They recognized that the same God that stood in the fiery furnace, the same God that delivered Daniel out of the den, is the living God, yes. right? Uh, correct. They, they, this is a, you know, coming from uh, not a believer, this is a great declaration. One, one of the, you know, things in the Bible that you say, wow. And, and, the, and like you said, living God saying, the ones that I serve are dead. The ones that Daniel serves is the true and only living God. And, and you know, uh, the Lord said it himself. Uh, you know, is he the God of the dead? Is he not the God yeah. of the living? He's the God yeah. of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, showing that even though Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had long since died, that they yeah. were still alive, alive. in his presence. You know, so uh, that's yes. what they're talking about. Now, now here we go. He says, okay, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. This sounds like a believer talking, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yes, and this sounds like someone who understands eternity and understands that God will reign forever and ever. 
Amen, brother. You know, um, and then it says here, he delivered and rescued and worked. He, that God delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and the earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. And, you know, basically, and it, it, it's not really the lions that Daniel got delivered from. He got delivered from the power of Satan. Satan. Because yeah. Satan was the one behind the scenes riling up these individuals' evil hearts to go, a, go against the uh, children of God. It's kind of like today. You know, you and I talk all the time, you know, sometimes when we're at work, you know, we, we you know, these individuals yeah. that just want to, you know, try to, you know, do this to you all day long and try to get you riled up. And and, and we know that he has his demons out there trying to do that to the children yeah. of God, right? Uh, yes, and, and he, he will bring people around to you that uh, do things that does not please God. You know, um, th th there's a big movement in the world today. Uh, you know, uh, homosexuals having a, a, a lot of say. So when they come around, you know, and Satan will bring them around, and you know, you you, you talk to these people, um, and, and you have to keep your testimony. But you know, it's like uh, just take them away from me. You know, it's like yeah, I, I, let me, it's, it, listen. <laughs> you and I both know because we we've experienced this, yeah. uh, especially when it comes to the homosexual community. Yeah, they are very uh, vulgar. They are yes. very. Uh, perverted is the word mm -hmm. you know and that's that's just the truth it's not an insult yeah. it's the truth um mm -hmm. and the way they speak it's like on purpose to try to offend and yeah. um and, or to get you you know out of your out of your your joy you know and uh, we both experienced that you and i yeah and uh and we we've counseled together and we you know encouraged each other in the, in the word and, and and believe me it's hard to do so yeah, throughout history, Satan has been doing this, has been mm -hmm. sending his agents in to try to disrupt and destroy, right? Uh, it, it is his job. Uh, he, it, it, you know, that's what he's here. For. That's not why he was created, but this is the decision that he made uh, when he decided, you know, um, I should be the one in charge. Uh, and he's going to hate every Christian. The minute you become a Christian, you become an enemy of Satan. Um, if you're not a Christian, you know, you're one of his friends. Um, even right. though your life may not be perfect, uh, and and you think, well, you know, I'm I'm not really following Satan. You are following Satan. That's um, right. And and he leaves you alone because you know. You know I tell you what, I'd rather be an enemy of Satan than an enemy of God. God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that being yeah. said, we'll go. We're we'll go ahead and uh, close this uh, session for this week. And uh, for all of you guys watching, uh, don't forget. To, you know, get into the, get our merch. Look in the description box below. Click on that link if you want to get something from us. Um, also, we'll be back next week for part seven. I can't believe we're already on chapter seven, brother. Yeah. Well, I can't believe we're on chapter seven. And before we go, anyway. I want you, Brother Lewis, to go ahead and present the gospel to those who are watching uh, that have heard all of this. And they're like, hey, you know, how do I get saved? Like the Philippian jailer, what must I do to get saved? What do you tell them? Well, Sy uh, Dennis is a perfect example of, of, a, of an unbeliever that sees what's going on and sees the wonders of God and the signs that God has done through Daniel. And he starts to realize um, okay, there, there is a one living God out there. Um, and maybe what the Bible says is true. Maybe what it says about hell is true. So you have to realize that, okay, things, this, this is not an accident. Uh, you know, everything has a purpose. So if you're listening to this, God is talking to you. You know, he's, he's calling his children. He says, come home, come to me. Okay, I will give you life. Like you said, I will give you eternal life. It doesn't matter what happens to you on this earth. You have an eternal life with the Lord. Okay? Cyrus has started to see this, and we see it in this chapter. We need, for those who do not know God, to, to get, you know, you have to get on your knees, like it says here. You just have to be truthful. You, you have to have a very humble heart and come before God and say, I want to be one of the ones that are saved. I want to feel you, you, your love and your mercy in my life every single day. Amen. And, and the, the key to that is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Believe that the Lord took our sins upon himself. Okay. That he was crucified. 
that he was buried and that he rose again the third day for our justification. And now he's seated at the right hand of the Father and will return again. So, you you know, believe the gospel that Jesus paid for all of your sin and that you don't, first of all, that you don't deserve anything good from God. You don't just, none of us do. All we deserve from the Lord is wrath and hell. That's what we deserve. That's what we earned. Okay. So, so we, you need to rely totally on God's grace, the free gift of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And as brother Lewis said, you don't got to say a made up prayer, speak to the Lord, call out to him from your heart, call out to him in truth, acknowledge your sins before him. Tell him you're deserving of hell, but you want to be saved. And guess what? All that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Amen. So, all right. All right. So until next time, my friends, again, join us next week. Part seven. Mm -hmm. Until next time, look up, lift your heads because our redemption draws near. Maranatha. Maranatha.